Welcome to the City of Belfast playing fields as the 2013-14 National League season kicks off. We've got the best of the action from today, starting with the match between Belfast Big Two, Linfield and Glentoran. Okay, so let's look at some of the team news. There's a real story of the number 10s for both Glentoran and Linfield. Juju McMullen starts uh, at the number 10 rule, wearing the number 10, he of course scored in the 1-1 draw last season when the sides last met. Glen Torn expected to run with a 4-2-3-1 formation. Look out for Ben Redpath, the number 7. He leads the line for David Laurie's side. Almost all set to go here for one of the most important games of the season and for Linfield. Let's run through some of their teams. Again, another 4-2-3-1 formation and some subplots Two former Glen Torin players in the Linfield side, which was under 13, of course, last season. Aaron Donnelly is at centre half, and Matt Shannon, another number 10, scored when the sides met in that 1 1 draw in April and netted 18 goals in 12 games last season since making the move across the big two rivalry. The season begins here in earnest. It does, and also let's mention the third team on the pitch. Referee today is Joe Watson, assisted by Trevor Higgins and Andrew Woodside. We're off and running for the start of the new NIBFA junior season. That's Ben Redpath immediately trying to get Glenn Torin up and running here with the first attacking move. But that's safely through to the goalkeeper, Tieran Campbell. We do have some players acting up. Kai Gemmel actually has a 2001 birthday. Along with Ethan Galbraith, and they really are acting up in terms of their physical presence as well. Spike, you'll find at this level. One year can make a big difference, can't it? Is Ben Redpath. You can see the physical stature of the, the man leading the Glen Torin line. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Obviously, uh, children develop different, both physiologically and, and psychologically, over over probably the sort of 13 to 16 age group. So uh, you'll see a massive difference in terms of size and stature. Clearance there by Aaron Donnelly, one of two former Glen Torin players, as I mentioned. And all the way across to James Turk. Another chance for Matt Shannon. Now, this is the man that many spectators have come to see. Who seems to have a very bright future in front of him. That's a good ball by Ethan Galbraith. Chance now for Truesdale. He's stood up by Callum Carson. It comes out the way to Boyd Munts. And back in from Truesdale. And just a win, perhaps, taking that one away and safely into the clutches of Oliver Weber. But for Glenn Torrent, the story of their season. Of it was very much that they were the nearly men. Third place in the under-13 league. Semi-finalists in the League Cup. Semi-finalists in the NIBFA Cup. They lost, of course, 3-0 to Oliver Plunkett. Semi-finalists in the Foil Cup as well. Lost on penalties to Sheffield United after a 1-1 draw. And by all accounts, it was an excellent performance in the Foil Cup. And really, they should have put the English side to the sword. Chance now for Jojo McMullen. Uh, the Glen's just having a bit of territorial advantage at the, at the minute. Um, you know, young Tiernan Campbell's had to make a couple of saves or a couple of second attempts. So uh, maybe just a wee bit of pressure. Linfield had the, the early exchanges. Glen Torn coming into their own really in the in the second period here. Strong challenge coming in there from Kai Gemmel. Clearance coming in there from Aaron Donnelly. I. Jojo McMullen trying to set Glen Torn away here in the attacking sense and he's going to get it back here and that looked like a bit of a yeah. free kick coming in. So there's a classic example, once Jojo got it, got ahead of his man, uh, it's a 1v1 matchup and, and really uh, Glen Torn would be in a 2v1 situation um, so so really he's probably just had to do one for the team there and, and take him out of play and they'll take the free kick and move on. First opportunity really for either side from a dangerous set piece scenario it is going to go the way of Glen Torn it's going to be Jojo McMullen very much the talismanic figure for this under 14 side will he go for goal or will he try to find a man in the end it was rather neither but always a potential that the goalkeeper might spill its spike or even one of his players can get a two on the end of it. Yeah, please, please for Tiernan Campbell there, goalkeeper. You know, he's, he's had a couple of second attempts there, but he made that one nice and clean. That'll do it. Trying to be that real link man between defence and attack. And here he is again. Well, another strong challenge from Chambers. Galbraith. 
Looking for Shannon. Can he get a shot away here? It's Matt Shannon. Saved by the goalkeeper. He's not got a hold of it though. But excellent work from young Galbraith who might be diminutive in frame but he certainly is having anything but a diminutive involvement in this game. Yeah, Jack Chambers with a, a, another crunch and tackle. Absolutely fair and uh, sets Linfield up on a counter attack straight away and a good chance. First real good chance of the game and a, and a good save by Oliver Weber. We have a coach that, that changes his shape to try and to try and alter the game and, and you know maybe at a higher level you would do that but obviously while these young guys are still learning the game then you want them to learn the positions and, and what it entails to play in this shape. Oh and a real mix up here. Ryan Doherty passing it back to the goalkeeper Oliver Weather went with his hands and by some distance this will be the best chance of the first half for either side it'll be an indirect free kick inside the penalty area yeah, I think Weber and Doherty just didn't communicate and got too close to each other and that's always problematic and that's probably the real learning curve of communication between young players so over the ball stands Jack Chambers Matt Shannon also an interested party the other former Glen Soren player Aaron Donnelly Looks a likely candidate as well. It's going to be teed up here, I think, for Jack Chambers by the looks of things. Caelan Boyd Munts arrives. It'll be Shannon to take. Oh, and again, Linfield, perhaps not aware that the free kick was taken. Communication from both teams lacking on these occasions. I think that summed up the, the under exuberance of youth. Set piece specialist for this Linfield under 14 side. In it goes from Boyd Mons. Goalkeeper thought about coming. Stayed on his line in the end. Shot was driven in superbly by Aaron Donnelly. Clearance. It's not away yet. Another strong tackle going in from Matt Shannon. Eventually McAleenan gets it away. Headed back in by James Turk. In steps Kai Gemmel. Yeah, first real signs of panic in the Glen Town defence really. You know, just before half time. Bad time to concede if you're going to. But uh, hopefully they get their foot back on the ball and, and just start to pass their way out. Uh, the two captains gliding here. It just looked like a bit of an uber exuberant challenge by Joe McMullen. It's a big two game, Scott, and it's warming up. Uh, that's what we want to see. And despite the rather wintry wind conditions, it really has been a thoroughly entertaining first half. And the halftime whistle does go no further added on time from the referee. But we'll have to say that if it's a game of two halves, the first half was split two ways. Glen Torin came out the strongest in the opening 10 or 15 minutes. But back came Linfield. Some real sights of goal for Matt Shannon, their talisman. Caelan Boyd, Munson, and Ethan Galbraith are also strong influences. But the halftime score is Linfield nil, Glen Torin nil. And we're off and running for the second half. And straight off the bat here, Jojo McMullen trying to get involved in play. There's a the strength and pace and power of Joe McMullen to get away. That's what Jim McGilton was touching on at half time. Tharmas ball into the middle. It might be the opening goal here. Redpath couldn't get it out of his feet quickly enough. Matt Shannon will try and bring it away here for Linfield. It's just all a little bit scrappy here. In the middle third of the pitch. Matt Shannon is there again. And just as he did in the first half, he's just beginning to drift back into the his own half. Now, the effort on goal. What a goal! And what a way to open a scoring this season. It's the substitute, Josh Tipping. He came off the bench. We said he was having a bit of an impact here. And what an impact he has had. It's Glenn Soren who have taken the lead here. It's Linfield nil, Glenn Soren 1. And here comes Matt Shannon. It might just open up here. Stieg, why is he goal, surely? What a save from the goalkeeper. Fabulous strike. Fabulous save by the goalkeeper. And Weber able to get it away for Glenn Soren. And Linfield... I think I was actually Callum Carson once again. Uh, it's giving Glenn Soren a slender advantage here, but here comes Jack Chambers, captain for Linfield. Truesdale, who looks the most likely candidate in truth, crossed into the middle, and again, more superb work from Callum Carson. Cross comes into the middle, with six winning, and it's equalising goal, and it's a captain's goal for young Jack Chambers. And if Linfield needed a goal, we said earlier it might come from a set piece in these blustery conditions. And the slender advantage of Glen Torn is wiped out thanks to captain Jack Chambers for Linfield. Yeah, I think both teams, both managers and coaches would be happy with that. Uh, it's an attack for Linfield. And there's Matt Shannon. It's a deep cross. Chambers! Oh, what a goal! Oh, what a goal! And Jack Chambers 
the captains put in a real performance here from Linfield and from out of absolutely nothing they've come from a goal down here and they now lead their fierce rivals by two goals to one what a start to the season in the under 14 division here Kellen Boyd Mons he certainly has an eye for goal Now Matt Shannon, can they add gloss here? They can add gloss, it's an own goal. Matt Shannon will take the accolades and the plaudits. And it's gonna be Linfield to pick up all three points here. A horrible moment in the Glen Torrin defense. But the brilliance of Matt Shannon, who has been a constant threat throughout this game. Premier division. The two number 11s colliding here. Jack Henderson for Linfield, Padrick Slane for Glen Torn, another second half substitute. And here's James Turkwheel through, he's had an excellent game at fullback for Linfield on this near right hand side. And the final whistle does go, and the opening day of the season brings delight for Linfield. After a goalless first half, a second half strike from substitute Josh Tipping for Glen Torn. Looked like the points were going to come back to the east of Belfast. But back came Linfield, two captain's goals for Jack Chambers. There he is, supplemented by an own goal. But let's give all the credit to Matt Shannon for Linfield, which leaves us a final score on the opening day of the new season is Linfield 3, Glen Torrin 1. So an exciting big two clash ended with the Linfield win. Epic TV Scott Goldblatt caught up pitch side with Glen Torrin manager David Lowry and Linfield boss Scott Graham. David, it just got away from your players in the second half there in the latter stages. Yeah, I think just uh, ran out of steam a wee bit, as you say. Uh, wind was a wee bit of a factor. It was kind of going across the pitch, but it was, uh, I think, definitely favoured the team in this half of the pitch, and we were attacking that way. And I think that combined with, obviously, playing against a very good Linfield side and having to do a lot of hard work off the ball, just ran out of steam a wee bit. Say, closing minutes, we let it slip, but that's football. You couldn't actually credit, though, the influence that the wind was having on this game. It really was a significant factor. Yeah. But both teams have to play with it, and we had advantage first half, which maybe we didn't use uh, the best use of it. But we want to get the ball down the grass and play football, so the win really shouldn't be a factor for us whenever we're trying to build our attacks. You know, looked like you'd made an inspired substitution in the second half, bringing Josh Tipping on. Two minutes later, he scores a goal and sets you on your way. Yeah, it was just unfortunate that the big man missed last Saturday's pre-season friendly, and he's had a back injury for a couple of weeks, and which is the reason why he didn't start the game. He's a big player for us, he holds the ball up well, especially with the formation we play with one up front. He closes the ball down well and you, you can see he's a lethal front man, but say we knew we might get five minutes or ten minutes out of him and we knew the quality that he had, so no problems throwing him on. Well, it's a long season ahead and the campaign really starts today in earnest. Yes, it does indeed, and albeit we started with defeat, but I still feel we started with a positive performance, and there's plenty of uh, good aspects from the display today, and we have a lot to build on, so I'm looking forward to the season. Good luck. Thank you. Well, it looked like it was going to get away from you in the second half there, but your players came back and recorded a very sound 3-1 victory. Yeah, well, to be fair, happy enough with the performance overall. It's always the first day of the season, so it's always going to be, be difficult to be fair to Glen Torn. It's set up very, very well, both teams. Similar in the formation today, we're playing 4 2 3 1, so early on there wasn't really an awful lot of clear cut chances for either team. Um, obviously, in this first half we played more so window wins, so second half we always knew we had the sort of wind behind us and it was a bit, bit more difficult for the opposition playing the strong wind. Um, but to be fair, to be fair to the boys, it was throughout the pre season games and into there, there's always plenty of confidence throughout the squad and I know that you know, 70 minutes is a long time for the boys and there's plenty of time to create chances and to score goals. Possibly could have had a few before Glen Torren scored and bit of a in judgment at the back from their goal before the boy could finish and then we responded very very well and quickly with three with three goals in a 10 minute period um, and also good quality play throughout that as well so to be fair the boys it was good good performance and, and good start to the season with a, with a good three points to be fair and last season the goals in midfield came from uh, Callum Boyd months but it was a different midfielder today Jack Chambers with the two important goals yeah well Jack finished himself I think with with over 10 goals last season as well so there's plenty of plenty of quality throughout the midfield and and goals throughout the team and that was shown again today with you know with the goal scores um, and Jack scoring first from a corner and the second from a good finish after a block shot by a defender followed by the third end obviously which is unfortunate for the defender but we stress the boys about the quality of cross balls and you put the balls in low and hard and into good quality areas then there's a chance for anyone to put it in 
i.e. from a you know from a defender which, which leads to the third goal it's unfortunate but well, there's good quality throughout and there's always the confidence throughout the team that there's goals can come from all areas of the pitch be it from set pieces from open play from any from any of the midfielders wide players and attackers there's, there's good quality throughout the pitch Our attention turns now to our second featured game Oliver Plunkett against Balamini United Your commentators are Barry Green and Roy Walker Let's take a look at the two teams Balamini United are without the services of influential midfielder Eamon McLaughlin as he is spending the week at Nottingham Forest. Jack O'Mahony partners Josh Galloway in the centre of midfield. St Oliver Plunkett then, their uh, new signings, Peter McMullen who left Glen Torren at the end of last season and uh, former Immaculata striker Rhys McGinley, they both start for St Oliver Plunkett. They've got a bit of joy there, uh, where Bellamina nearly just wanting to settle. Oh, it's a nice header on. Chance for Bellamina, but that's well intercepted by Harry Monaghan. Tuned in, seen the danger, come off his line quickly, came out and snuffed out the threat of that Bellamina attack. Ronan Hamill again. Effort coming in from Hamill. Due to nervy start here at the City of Belfast playing fields against uh, St Oliver Plunkett side. Containing a lot of the players who won the national championship. And a shot coming in from Reese McGinley. Well, he just robbed the pocket of the uh, Balamini United defender. Right, the one, two, the ball ultimately falling to Mark McKenna and Balamini United. You know, abreast of a, get a picture in your mind of a, where you what, what you want to do and see it early and, and then be able to, to carry it out. And there, there's definitely a lot of technical ability on show here. Here's Ronan Hamill, cross into the box. And there's the first goal of the game. After 26 minutes, it's headed home by Rhys McGinley. Barry, that was a great ball in, wasn't it? Just an absolutely fantastic ball in. And we're seeing the majority of the Oliver Plunkett attacks have come down the right-hand side. They've, they've held their shape. You, you know, he put that extra man into midfield to try and dispute possession. And uh, I think they've done well. This is good by Dawkins onto his weaker right foot. It draws the save from Harry Monaghan. Bellamina could do with a little bit of territory. It's a, the, the second half has, uh, has begun a little bit similar to the first half where the, the balance of play has been with the, the lads from Oliver Plunkett trying to defend this corner. Jared Meehan puts the ball in perfectly for the substitute. And Declan Dunn, having come on at the halftime interval, has made it 2-0 uh, to St Oliver Plunkett. Here is Dawkins. Dawkins. Well up and over the top of the target. Great effort. Strong left foot. And, uh, you know, I thought, okay, we'll put the ball in. See what the goalkeeper does. Here's Robinson. Ball into the area. Strong defending by Declan Dunn. He looked at Powerhouse. It was Dunn. Former Cliftonville player. Started as a sub today, but... Uh, Pushing for a start, his manager Brendan Meehan tells me. Here's McGinley. What can McGinley do? Powers his way into the 18 yard box. This is fantastic by McGinley. And Balamini United had no answer whatsoever. And McGinley, who opened the scoring in the first half, has scored his second of the game. We played 51 minutes at the City of Belfast playing fields and St Oliver Plunkett go into a 3-0 lead here against Balamini United. It'll be difficult for them to come back, but McGinley has been and continues to be, Roy, the star of the show. Robinson has a chance to cross, though, for Balamina. The game spread out just at the minute. Through ball. Chance for Balamina to score their first goal of the season. And they have done so. Andrew Smith took that away. Ball... Well, it's good to see players, incidentally, who have uh, gone off for a while. Sean Wallace and uh, Mark McKenna appear to have come back on again. Yeah. So yeah, they slipped themselves <laughs> over. Oh, it's great play. Neat turn by McKenna. What a pass. Lovely it. forward ball. And uh, well taken first time. Can he finish? Well, that's game set and match now. As uh, Donald Rocks gets on the score sheet for St Oliver Plunkett. As the minutes tick away, and that uh, dance move is introduced once again by Declan Dunn, but centre half, the one time Cliftonville player, scored with a powerful header five minutes after the restart. Here's Harry Robinson, 
Ball in for Andrew Smith and unfortunately for the Sky Blues, they couldn't make the most of that opportunity. It's well cut out though by the <coughs> men in black and white and they need to be careful here. Palomino, the goalkeeper is out of his goal. And there is the fifth goal of the afternoon. And it's come for now Ferris. He only started playing football two years ago. So a raw talent. He actually scored the third goal in the 2012 NIBFA final. Uh, the comeback at the end of the day. I mean, you you had the uh, experience of that yourself. Well, chance coming in for St. Oliver Plunkett. And they have scored a sixth goal. And that is uh, unfortunate for Ballamini United. It was Mark McKenna involved again. And uh, yet again, we get that, uh, that fine display. The uh, dancing, certainly, and Oliver Plunkett. And uh, that has led to the guys from Lenadin creating chance after chance. And as you say, they've been very efficient with the ball. Now here's a chance at the other end. Offside, though, Mark Cochran, known as Sparky. Hope that uh, he had got off the mark for the season. Well, he finished that very well. Again, the, the first touch, it's the first touch that makes the chance now. Okay, he's flagged for offside. He didn't know that clearly. Uh, but, you know, opportunistic. Right? Her first touch was excellent. Caressed the ball into his own path and slipped it past the goalkeeper. And sadly, the, the referee, uh, the assistant flags. Well, there is the full time whistle blown by Darren O'Neill. After the game, Barry Green got the views of Oliver Plunkett manager Brendan Mayne and the Bellamina boss, David McAleese. Brendan, first game of the season and uh, the best start possible for your guys? Absolutely terrific. Um, the kids have worked hard all season, uh, pre-season training. It's been very, very good. We've had two tournaments we won there in the last two, three weeks. We also got beat by 7-8 in the Ford Cup, the quarter-final. So I was expecting a good start. Um, got a very, very good, strong squad there. Um, done very, very well. Delighted. Six goals to one. Which players in particular stood out for you? I know Reese McGinley bagged two. He looks a player. Um, Reese McGinley, quality player. He just came to the club. Just actually signed there this week. Um, he's actually originally came from Macalada, and unfortunately they have no team this year, so he he, he volunteered to come to their sales. He's a terrific player. Um, he's been with Liverpool for the last five years, and great potential through it. You know, um, not only Reese. I believe myself personally that there's at least four to five other players in that squad that has good potential across the water. What pleased you most about your side's play today against Ballymena? Um, you know, what I try to coach is keeping the ball. Um, he's in a bit of quality and confidence on the ball, and that, and that wasting is, is, is what they were on two, three years ago. And the more and more you do that, the more and more the kids get used to that. So it's important. Do you have a 6 1 scoreline in the end? A bit harsh on your boys? A learning process, I would say. I think just this is the first game in this, this league. Um, the guys knew that Plunkett would probably pass it about pretty well, but I think the guys can take some positives out of it. Yeah, there were a lot of players on show there today who, uh, well, they showed a lot of promise. We have one or two boys who are very capable. Um, our big goalkeeper today probably kept was in that for a long time, making three very, very good saves. We tried a few players in different positions today. It didn't work out today, but with chances as well. And I like to think we played pretty decent football. Young lad uh, O'Mahony um, yeah. looks good on the ball. He looks to have a bit of potential about him. That's the first he's played in the centre midfield for probably two years. Um, he normally plays sweeper for us and we asked him to do a wee job for us today. And I think he enjoyed it actually. He's down there with a smile on his face anyway, so he must have enjoyed it. Our final feature game of the day was contested by Cliftonville and Maiden City. Your commentators for this one, Johnny Martin and Mickey Donnelly. Fantastic setting today. Hoardings around the pitch. Pitch looks in fabulous condition. And Maiden City get us underway. Pretty ball forward from the Cliftonville centre back. A chance for Maiden City. Shot comes in at goal and well, fantastic save by Chris Simpson. Adam Fle Fleming will take this one. Adam Fleming. Summer signing from Oxford United. Up around London there, there's plenty of brilliant youth teams. Around six teams up there, so really it's a hotbed of football. And if you look at the international scene recently, a real flux of players coming from the northwest. Yeah, there is. There's a foil harps up there too. There's loads of good teams up and around. I mean, I don't know much about these kids. Oh, it's a goal. There's the opening uh, goal, number nine. Made no mistake there, Kyle Walker. 
He scored eight goals last season. He was injured for a good section of it. Um, I think it was a mix-up in there between the Timbal defence. I'm not sure what way, you know why the keeper called it or not there, but it seemed to be the draft telling him and no one around him. He just slitted it in. He made no mistake and away from no, like four yards out. No, he didn't. No. And that's the sign of a good striker. <laughs> of course, it's a, it's a great time to be a Cliftonville fan. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Especially last year, on the, on the back of last year. Chance to cross for Maiden City. Ball comes into the box. Shot does come in and what a finish. Fantastic finish from the edge of the box. Goalkeeper had no chance there. But again, as I said, Maiden City, as I said, has started the bed and they look more hungry than Kimball. Here's you know, Martin Alley oh. with a shot for Cliftonville. Just pulls it past the left post. He's been at the club for three years. Here comes his delivery in their crowded area. Volleyed effort there from the number 10, Jack McCoughlin. 20 minutes of half coaching. Goes Throws. kids hard to throw a throw in. Here comes yeah. Cliftonville. Lovely through yeah. ball. Good finish. Yeah. And what yeah, a finish yeah, it was. The number yeah. 10, Jack McCoughlin. Yeah. Slots into the bottom left. What a finish. Stayed really cool and composed there. Yeah, good finish from good run off the ball as well. And he keeper came out and he slatted it in. Great confident finish. That's better, Mark. Mark yep, Herdman tries go. to go past his man. Mark Herdman. Ball across the box. Martin Mark O'Leary oh. tries to side foot. Maiden City struggling. Here come Maiden City. Lovely through ball. Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker finishes. Yeah. He took his goal really well there and celebrate he should. It's two goals in the game now for him. I mean Sean knows his team better than me unless there's an injury on in the back four but you're three one down you need to. Martin O'Lally plays a ball trying to find Bassett. Chuck comes in yeah, and they've Mark. scored. Yeah, yeah. Mark Herdman yeah. Messi puts a ball in the net. So you could possibly say a goalkeeping error but he struck it well, low and hard, making it tough for the goalkeeper. Yeah, Mark done well there. He'd be, uh, he'd be glad he had there because in you know, the first half he wasn't really in it. Two lineups, two team lineups, but I forgot to tell us the subs. <laughs> Maiden City with an in swinging corner kick here. Here it comes. In the great area, uh, and they've scored. It was an OG. I think it was an own goal. No player. Uh, Someone is claiming it. Yeah. So far, uh, the game's not over yet, like, but it's going to take something special. It will. Um, Rory Donaghy. Here comes a free kick. Donaghy punches, and he should be proud of that. Sean probably would have wanted that from the start of the game, but. Oh, mistake there, yeah, chance. Nice. Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker it's makes nice. no mistake. Kyle Walker makes that a hat trick. The ball presented him quite easily, and he had a lot of time, but he stayed cool and composed. Three goals for him, a hat trick. Griffinville with a corner. Can they score another? Here comes the corner kick. Aimed in towards the back post. The ball just won't come down. Chance for a shot. Shot comes in and it's just pulled, dragged wide of the target. Number nine, Mark McKee with the effort. And in fact, that's the last piece of action from the game. Maiden City winning a great advert here for the NIBFA. Maiden City 5, Cliftonville 2. Epic TV's Johnny Martin got the post-match remarks from the Maiden City and Cliftonville managers, Peter Allen and Sean McCafferty. Winners 5-2 today, what was your assessment of the match? I thought we were very clinical on the goals, I think. We started poorly, but for 10 minutes, from 10 minutes into 25 minutes of the first half, we really passed the ball and got a couple of goals. And we sort of just took a foot after the gas then. And the second half, to be fair to Clevenville, come into the game. But uh, we were very clinical in front of the goal today. And with Kyle Walker in that sort of form, I think we're a match for anybody, you know. And a word on Kyle Walker, a hat trick. What an, what an advert for the league. Uh, Kyle's, Kyle's fantastic. Kyle has had a bad injury last year and he's been up and down in his form. And, but I always knew this, he's capable of this and since he came back from the summer he's been involved in our under 17s for a cup and he's went away and worked hard and he's got a couple of disappointments with the Victory Shield and he didn't get selected for the Mull Cup and it's really spurred him on and he's come back 
fit, lean, and really as good as any striker in the league on that on that uh, performance. And a great start to the league. Five two, five two winners and three points in the bag after one game. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm not so happy with the of our passing. Our general play is usually better than that, but that's probably down to Cliftonville too. Made things difficult, and they always have an idea, and they're they're a competitive team. So didn't get the perfect game, but five two away first game of the season can't be too disappointed. Sean defeated five two today. How would you assess that uh, result and performance? Okay, obviously the result's very disappointing. Uh, as we had said before kickoff, it was always going to be a tough game. Two teams that sort of finished in the top four last season. Uh, they're usually only just a goal in it. And I say, okay, the score finished 5 2. I thought that wasn't a sort of true reflection of the game. I say 3 2, the game is in the balance and we were pushing for the equaliser. Just unfortunately, we conceded an own goal from a corner and that basically was sort of the, the end of it. Um, so the result was disappointing, but performance ways, I say a lot, a lot of positives from it. A few boys who were making their debuts for Cliftonville today and a few great performances from them. Uh, the back line, I say, a few changes from what we had in previous years. So hopefully we'd like to improve upon that. So the players will get to know each other a wee bit better and the communication will improve and just generally will tighten up the defence. But apart from that, midfield and going forward, I thought we looked quite good. We created chances and I'm expecting sort of big things from the boys over the next couple of weeks. We move on now to the rest of the day's action, beginning with a roundup of the results from match day one of the under-12s qualifying section. Maiden City nil, Ballina Mallard three, Dungannon Youth one, Balamoni United two, Enniskill and Rangers nil, Magarafeld Sky Blues four, Sion Swifts three, Limavati Youth three, Crusaders two, Carnini five, Glentoran five, Cliftonville one, Ridgeway Rovers two, Linfield six, Glendowen one, Oliver Plunkett five. One more! Yes. One more! Yes. Go on, go in. Yes. Oh, 
on Craig. Moving on now to the results from the under 13s. Section A. Cliftonville 3, Corian 0. Dungannon U3, Derry Colts 0. Glentoran 2, Ridgeway Rovers 1. Linfield 5, Glenavon 2. Crusaders 1, Portadown 5. Bertie Peacock 1, Magarafelt Sky Blues 1. Oliver Plunkett 1, Foyle Harps 1. The results from Section B. Sound Swifts 0, Ballon Mallard 2. Oxford United 2, Ballamini United 4. Glendowen 2, Limavada Youth 4. Warren Point Town 2, Maiden City 5. Lorne 0, Oak Athletic 0. Here's the best of the under 13 games. We'll see a big East Belfast derby between Glentorn and Ridgeway Rovers and Irish League legend Mickey Donnelly's Cliftonville taking on Coleraine. But we start with Glenavon's trip to Linfield. Thank <laughs> you. 
Look at left back. Lovely. That's really good football. Really well done, Cruz. Has to go to it. One is has to be. Stay, Mark. Here it is, Mark. Here it is. Let's look. Come on, Mike. That's better. Stay, stay. Go hit that. Stay up. Stay up. That's on JT. Play in there, have to go, have to go. Mark, deal with. Boom. Keep her, Mark, keep her. Come on, wait, come wait. John, John. Oh boy, you gotta make his mind up, make the run, Chad. Oh no! Boys, cutting that out! Oh, sir! Now the under 14 week one results, section A, Ballinamal R3, Sion Swifts 1, Crusaders 5, Derry City 1, Linfield 3, Glentoran 1, Ridgeway Rovers 5, Glenavon 1, Oliver Plunkett 5, Ballymena United 1. Section B, Institute 1, Colmore 5, Limavada Youth 6, Warren Point Town 2, Cliftonville 4, Lurgan Town 7, Ballymoor 0, Maiden City 2. Cliftonville and Lurgan 9 to kick off our under 14s roundup. Go, 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 go
Now the under-15 results, Section A, Ridgeway Rovers 3, Crusaders 4, Glendowen 1, Cliftonville 0, Linfield 2, Bertie Peacock 1, Oxford United Stars 2, Ballina Mallard 0, Glentoran 3, Maiden City 3. Section B, Glenavon 2, Ballamina United 3, Ballamoney United 0, Institute 4, Bangor 2, Porter Down 2. The under-15 section involves some close games. Top of the bill, perhaps. The All-Irish League clash between the Seasiders and Portadown. Gally, gally. 
That's better. Oh, Joyce, cover. There you go. Come on, Hodge. One more, one more. Moving on now to the under-16 results. Section A. Crusaders 3, Foyle Harps 1. Limavadi 2, Tristar 1. Limfield 1, Trojans 0. Cliftonville 2, Maiden City 5. Ballinamallar 2, Porta Down 3. Oliver Plunkett 1, Institute 0. Section B. Magrafeld Sky Blues 0, Glenavon 1. Cookstown 1, Glendowen 5. Glentoran 2, Ballymena United 1. Two exciting encounters now in the under 16 section for you. First up, it's Glentoran against Ballymena, followed by Crusaders against Foyle Harps.
And finally, the under-17s results round up. Glentoran 6, Wakehurst 3, Limavady Youth 5, Balamini United 3, Cookstown 1, Limfield 5, Maiden City 1, Cliftonville 1. And finally, we bring you the goals from Friday night's under-17 floodlit league game between Glentoran and Wakehurst. Jason, just talk us through that. How, how do you think that went for yourselves tonight? Uh, very well performance overall. A um, bit leaky at the back. You know, three goals conceded. Probably the best goal was their own centre half heading into his own net. But other than that, you know, glad to score six there. So on again to next week to Cliftonville. Just focus. And uh, this is your first time uh, taking part in this in this league. And uh, how do you think this is going to develop your players? Or how, how do you think this is going to benefit your players? Well, firstly, I think the exposure uh, for the players is going to be a lot more beneficial. Uh, I do also think that players playing against a higher quality of player week in, week out uh, is obviously going to help them develop also. It is. Realistically, um, progression is key for us. Well, after weeks of pre-season preparations, here's the way the league tables look after match day one.
Well, that's it from the city of Belfast playing fields as the NIBFA's National League campaign got underway for all the clubs here today. We've seen some terrific goals, some great action, and you can continue to follow that on the Epic Sports Solutions NI website. Until next time, I'm Barry Green.